Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped. Now, when it comes to Porsches, I have a mild obsession. And it's not about the mark, and it's not about a particular model of Porsche. I've got a Boxster in my garage. I love a 911. The thing I absolutely obsess about is a color. That color, oak green metallic. I think it is the most beautiful color to paint a car, closely followed by Viola Hong Kong. I have a friend of mine who has a lovely Ferrari in that. It's a beautiful, deep metallic purple. But yes, oak green metallic is the nicest color you can order a Porsche in. It used to be a paint to sample color. Now you can order it as an option. Not quite sure what the difference between those is, apart from a small price, but it's still very expensive. But that, that is the latest generation of Porsche Taycan. And I think it's quite a controversial car and there is lots to unpack and discuss in this video, but let's just take an appreciation of that. What a colour. Now the Porsche Taycan was the first performance EV that I ever drove. And since then, I've driven many others, but I still consider it to be the benchmark for performance EVs. And its greatest, I don't know, compliment is it drives just like a Porsche. Now I know that certainly over the past few years, and I only have to look at the comments in the pictures I posted of this car yesterday to know that these cars have a big challenge at the moment with depreciation. I think a lot of the people who have bought Taycan are company owners or directors that have bought that car through some kind of salary sacrifice scheme or some kind of scheme to help them get the tax breaks from doing that. And unusually for a Porsche, they have suffered quite severe depreciation. And you can pick up used Taycans now for actually approachable money. So if you want to get into Taycan, then you don't have to go and buy a new one. You could look on the used market. I want to put that to one side, and I know some of you might think that's a convenient thing to do, but I want to kind of have a look at this car now, because since the version I drove, this car has improved a great deal. It's got different styling. It's got, uh, certainly from a drivetrain and battery and so on, the range you're getting, the speed of charge, all of those things have increased. And I want to just revisit the car to see if it's still that benchmark for performance EV. It has some competition. Clearly, Audi RS e-tron GT and the latest derivatives of that. If you come down the, the, the price stakes and the, the power stakes, you look at things like a Hyundai Ioniq 5N, you look at a Kia EV6 GT. I guess from Lotus, you've got both Electra, which I've driven, and Emea, which I haven't done. Very similar power outputs to these in the region of 900 horsepower, although you only get that with this car at launch control. Apart from launch control, it's still just over 700 horsepower, so it's a lot. But before we delve into that and the plans I've got for the car, because we're going to take it on a bit of a road trip, I wanted to walk around the spec of this car, because when I got the spec sheet, I thought two things instantly, oh my days, that is the perfect spec for me. And then I looked at the spec list and the options on this car, and honestly, my eyes watered. <laughs> now, I'm gonna use my phone for reference. So this is a Taycan Turbo, and its base price is just over 134,000 pounds. I've mentioned this beautiful oak green metallic paint, that as an option is 2,700 pounds. And these beautiful 21 inch RS Spider design wheels, they're an extra 2,700 pounds as well. I mean, they're beautiful, but ouch. I mean, you're talking whew, over five grand for just those two. Inside's pretty special though. This, this might not be to everyone's taste. I think my perfect spec would probably be a slightly lighter color than this, like a creamy tan color. This is called truffle. It's bold, but God, it's gorgeous, and it smells beautiful in here. But let's have a look on my spec sheet. Uh, well, actually, it's not bad. It's only 1,700 quid extra. 
Now, when it comes to the Taycan, I'm actually more of a fan of the Sport Turismo or Cross Turismo styling, that shooting brake styling. I just think the rear of the car finishes more nicely than this one. But a few more options. It has the rear steering option fitted. Now that isn't so bad, uh, he says. Rear steering, that's 1,600 quid but it also has active ride control. Now this is a punchy option, that's 6,290 pounds. Now, I love a panoramic roof. In most videos, I mention pan roofs, if the car's got it, or normally if it doesn't have it, moaning about the fact that it doesn't have it. This car has the coolest pan roof. In fact, the roof is pretty much a single piece of glass, but it has a really cool trick up its sleeve. It can be clear, but at the touch of a button, it can go matte. Very difficult to show this on camera. And then I've got two, whoa, two different designs, semi and bold. Now, if you want that as an option, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's just under 4,000 pounds as an option. Talking about 4,000 pounds, this car has the Berminster 3D high-end surround sound system upgrade three and a half thousand pounds so yeah i'm not going to go through the whole spec list and sometimes i get asked why press teams put so much spec on cars and the answer is really simple it's so that you can actually as a reviewer see all the different options and get to play with them and and see if they're worthwhile and comment on them in you know either a, you know a review or a video or whatever you're creating so i think for uh, uh, a customer to spec a car like this because it's now so it's gone from a base price of 30 134,000 pounds to an on the right road price of 167 and a half thousand pounds so it's a very very expensive car however it is and that roof's just so cool very very cool so what are my plans so um tomorrow we're off to the Cotswolds because one of the things I want to do is test out the range the quoted or usable range of this car is just over 300 miles on a full charge. So we're going to drive to the Cotswolds and we're going to see if we can drive all the way back without charging. That's the first test. Tracy's going to have a drive. The performance figures of this car are otherworldly. So uh, power, um, 707 horsepower. But when you engage launch control with 884 horsepower and 890 newton meters of torque, that is a lot. The other thing this car has is a two-speed transmission. So you'll hear it almost, it's not, a, it's not changing gear, it's changing speed, but you'll hear the noise as you accelerate. I'll try and show you that as we go. But the performance is uh, quite frankly staggering. Zero to 62 in 2.7 seconds zero to 124 in 8.2 seconds and a top speed of 162 miles an hour it's quick but i want to try and try and work out what the the range and the efficiency is like if you drive it reasonably enthusiastically it will do 376 miles wltp so i think you know 300 to 310 in the real world is quite doable so that's what we're going to do so i'm going to go and put it on charge because the garage is nearly done but one thing that has been done is my charger's working. So I can actually charge the car in the garage. This will be the first car that I've actually put into my new garage, which is very exciting. And then tomorrow we're off to the Cotswolds. We might be taking the pups along as well. Now, it's not finished, but I do need to charge the car, so Let's get it on me zappy. Uh, there's a DC charge port on the left hand side of the car that does AC as well, and an AC charge point on the right hand side of the car. There you go. Hopefully we'll get some charge in that. And tomorrow we're off to the Cotswolds. Okay, it is the next day. Now I've parked the Taycan just round the back here because we've got builders on site today and there was no effort to park. But after a night on my Zappi wall box, it has a healthy state of charge. Let's just have a quick look inside. If we turn the car on, we've got there 327 miles. So next thing we've got to do is get some pups in the car. 
Okay, so plenty of room in the back, all packed, which is all good. We've got the first puppy sat ready to go in the back. Wander around the front, we've got a front which has quite a lot of storage for puppy beds, which is all good. Uh, we've got um, Tracy in the driver's seat and then baby duck, whoa, hold on, Tracy in the driver's seat? Yeah, I thought it was my turn. Uh, all, all right, okay, so yeah, your Tracy will be driving then, excellent. So I honestly thought I might get a drive. But then, as soon as Tracy found out that Porsche had put her on the insurance, <laughs> the chances of that were pretty slim, weren't they? Well, it was super kind of them. <laughs> Very kind of them. So we've plugged the destination into the sat nav, we've paired Tracy's phone. One of the things I do need to do is go into this and then go into assistance, which is just there, additional functions, and then you just put the speed warning off and lane departure off and then back to, see that was super easy. Amazing, and I've even got a screen where I can just see how scary things are. Oi. <laughs> now you have driven a Taycan before, I think. Yes. You drove it last, the last one, didn't you? Yeah. Amazing, okay, Very well, nice. enjoy. The girls are safely in the back. Asleep. Well, uh, yeah, probably already, look. They are very chilled out, I've put two, towels down so just in case anybody's worried about eh, you put dogs in the back of a car well if we bought one of these that's where they would go so it's that simple really so you're just in normal mode yes thank you do not touch the car would you like to go up to sport mode no, thank you. sport plus mode no, thank you. launch control no thank you okay what do you think of the spec uh it's uh super cool <laughs> should we do outside and inside outside uh, the colour's just beautiful, yeah. beautiful green. Yeah. Um, inside... Uh, Bold? Uh, no, I don't think so. The roof is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, what, the, the way it changes? Yep. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> there's problems on the A34. Wade has directed us off onto some back roads, but it looks like it's directed everybody else that way as well, so we've been in traffic. Now, not that we need to, because we've got enough range to get to the Cotswolds and back, but we have put the car in range mode. Um, now, what that's done is put the aircon in eco, and it's just, I guess, back the throttle mapping off a little bit, but um, it's still quite quick, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty quick. <laughs> it's, it's super speedy. Um, now, one of the interesting things, the economy reading is... Uh, it's in kilowatt hours per hundred miles. And we're currently running 36.6. Now, to be three miles per kilowatt hour, you need that to be about 33. So we're not far off of three miles per kilowatt hour, which with the size of battery pack in the car would, would equate to about 300 miles of range. But it would be interesting to see if, with your amazing driving, Greavesy, whether we can get that less than 30, what do you reckon? Way. I've been sat in traffic for like an hour. No. Your, your right foot's way too heavy for that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> need a different driver to do that. <laughs> now, I've mentioned the rather expensive suspension upgrade on this car at some £6,000, but I've got to say the ride quality is just mega, isn't it? It's, it's so smooth and so quiet. And actually that's probably its dangerous point because it's so quiet and so smooth, it's quite difficult to realise how fast you're going, isn't it, mate? It can, it could be, yeah. Yeah, it could be. A friend of ours said that it might be the case. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the ride quality, even on um, you know, rough back roads, it's just it just glides over the road. Oh, driving past one of our favourite hotels, Dormy House. Not staying there though, but we are only one and a half miles from our destination. And interestingly, we've done a hundred and oh sorry, 120 miles. We've averaged 
56.2 miles per kilowatt hour and we've still got 173 miles of range left so it's 120 125 miles home so we should be all right to get back without having to charge up don't worry girls we're nearly there you've been very good fast asleep not a murmur be able to get a leg stretch very soon. <laughs> Alex, what are you doing? <laughs> That's called him. That's called. <laughs> you meant to be a bit more patient than that. Oh, what have you done, you big muppet? Go for it. Very good. You can come again. Doing my sink clap and everything. Uh -huh. Now I spoke to your agent yesterday about your your rate. <laughs> Very competitive. Huh? Yeah, pro bono. Oh, yeah. I had to look at. I had to look up what pro bono meant. Yeah, free. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and also, I'm dead impressed because you let me drive home. I didn't let you drive. It's your turn. <laughs> so we're on our way home. Uh, so we've got uh, 121 miles to get home and 153 miles of range. Well, great. Start with range anxiety already. <laughs> There's no range anxiety. I'm going to see if I can get that kilowatt hours per 100 kilometres mark down a bit um, and see how we get on. But, well, regular viewers to the channel will recognise where we are. Nearly home, aren't we? Nearly, yeah. Petrol Pet Hill Climb. Now, um, we've been in the car two and a half hours, fresh as a daisy. Such a nice car to do a long journey in because it's so smooth and so quiet. Um, done 123 miles and I've averaged 33 or just over 33 kilowatt hours per 100 miles which is 3 miles per kilowatt hour which is the target I wanted which I think for a 700 horsepower four wheel drive performance EV is a very um, respectable. respectable that's the word can you come again <laughs> <laughs> it's a very respectable number um, if you wanted more efficiency, you could go for the two-wheel drive, non-turbo version, and you would get, get more than that. So, interestingly, that means we'll have done, there and back, around about 260 miles. I popped out last night with our friend for a slightly more enthusiastic 10 miles or so, and we're going to get home with about 30 miles of range left. So, the fact that Tracy... <coughs> When you drove yesterday, you were in normal mode most of the time, driving in your normal spirited fashion. And I've driven a little bit more, you know, responsibly on the way home. This car will easily do 300 miles. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. No, it's impressive, really impressive. Really, really good. So, um, still some more tests to go, but I could do with a cup of tea. Indeed. And the girls could do with stretching their legs. They'd be very good sat in the back, quiet as mice. Asleep. Asleep, exactly, enjoying the smooth ride of the Taycan Turbo. Now we are home, so while Tracy gets the dogs out the boot, I had to share this with you. So 131 miles on the journey home, 32.8 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. I think that in a 707 horsepower performance EV is a pretty respectable number, to be honest. And we've still got 26 miles of range left, so 260 miles plus 10 or so miles last night, plus 26 miles. I'm going to say that's 300 miles. Very, very impressive. However, there is an argument to say that you don't buy a £170,000 performance EV to drive sensibly and just be, you know, your, your kind of range conscious person. But if this was a petrol, you know, a car with a, a V8 or a V12 or a flat six, the faster you go, the more fuel you burn. It's the same equation, really. So, you know, for sure, if I drove this car in Sport Plus, there's no way I'm going to get to the Cotswolds and back uh, on, a, on a single charge. But it is possible to do 300 miles in this car. And we, I don't feel like we drove on the way home, uh, you know, any differently, really. We sat at cruise control on the motorway. I've averaged 49 miles per hour over 130 miles. Do the maths yourself. Um, and I think that's very impressive. Now, in a lot of Taycan and Taycan Turbo reviews, I'm sure you see lots of launch controls and people driving really fast down the road. And I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different in this video. We've already seen that this car will do 300 miles on a single charge. And I think the range number is a, 
a number that people find really, really important when they're looking at electric cars. And the amount of comments you get, oh, it's got to do 300 miles or 400 miles or even more. Well, I've demonstrated that this car, even though it's a 700 horsepower performance EV, can still do 300 miles to a charge. The other though, maybe more important number is how rapidly these things can replenish that range. How quickly can they charge? Now I've already charged this on my home Zappi charger. That's a seven kilowatt charger. And if you wanted to go from let's say 10% all the way up to a full battery on that, you'd probably be looking at, I don't know, six, seven, eight hours. Um, you'd do it overnight and you'd wake up in the morning and you'd have a full 300 miles of range and happy days. If you want to go on a longer journey and you need to do a charge stop, I mean, I went to the Cotswolds and back and I didn't need a charge stop because there was sufficient range in the car to do that. But if you do need to stop in public, how fast these cars can charge is perhaps the most important metric. Now, when you go to a Porsche Centre, you will find 350 kilowatt chargers and this car can plug into one of those. So, even though I've got to go back to Porsche Centre Reading to drop this car off today, I'm actually going to go via Porsche Centre Portsmouth and try out the ultra rapid charging. Now, I'm using the native sat nav to do my navigation so that the car knows it's going to a charge stop so it can do things like precondition the batteries to prepare for the ultra rapid charging. And I know when I get there, I'm going to arrive with around about 19% of battery, I've stated in lots of these videos, if you want the fastest public charging, really you need to stay, stay within the range of 20 to 80%. So what I'm gonna do is head over to Porsche Centre Portsmouth and I'm gonna go from roughly 20%, 19 by the looks of it, up to 80% and see how long that takes. But while we're going there, I mean, it would be rude of me not to do a launch control, so I thought it would be amusing if I put someone in the passenger seat that loves cars and loves fast cars but has never been in an EV and never done a launch control before. Now then, this is Steve, one of the builders that's building my dream garage. You like your cars, don't you mate? I love my cars, absolutely love them. Never been in an electric car, have you? No, not at all, no. And you've never been in a car with 890 horsepower? No, nowhere near. I think we need to do a launch control. Are we ready? Go for it, I'm ready. Car now. <laughs> 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 to be fair, I was never a fan, but <laughs> yeah. This so that's is... 0 to 60 in well under three seconds. Yeah. But yes. the bit that electric cars do really well is the mid range. So if we let's just back off down to let's say 40, right, and then go. This is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. But every Porsche, whatever it can do 0 to 60 in, it can do 60 to 0 in half the time. So the brakes are quite good as well. Ready? So if we do 60, I'll just show you the brakes. Wait. <laughs> Wait. But yeah. <laughs> it is so much fun doing that, so easy. You just put it in Sport Plus, put your foot on the brake, put your foot all the way down on the throttle and hold on tight. It takes no skill whatsoever and it does rearrange your internal organs and after a while, I think it would probably get a bit dull and a bit boring. Anyway, let's go and head over to Porsche Centre Portsmouth and get some more electrons. Here we are. Porsche Portsmouth. Now the big question is, as in all of these things, is there anybody connected to the chargers? Let's see, shall we? Because <laughs> if there are, it's going to be really annoying. But um, oh, we've got we've got free rapid chargers here, people. Ah, look at that. So there's me fast Ionity charger. I'm going to go in the one on the right just here happy days awesome absolutely awesome now so um 
when you buy one of these, you can get this card here. It's a Porsche charging card. So you get three years with a new Taycan for one of these. And what that does is it gives you access to uh, charging uh, networks. But let me just get the stats out for you. So um, you once you've got one of these, so this gives you called the Porsche Charging Service, or PCS. And you get this with, with Taycan, Macan EV, uh, Kayan and Panamera e-hybrid customers. Um, and basically it gives you access to a network of over 550,000 AC and DC charge points. But the really, really important one, that's throughout Europe by the way, is Ionity and the Porsche Center, like the one in front of me, because they are uh, up to 350 kilowatts. And the really cool thing is, what this does is it gives you a reduced or discounted pricing. So I'm gonna be paying 39 pence per kilowatt hour. So in rough money, let's say this car, um, just to keep the math easy, 100 kilowatt hour battery, it's gonna cost me 39 pounds to fill up from zero. Whereas if you were paying on Ionity without one of these, Ionity rates could be 80, 85 pence. So 80, 85 pounds for the same charge. So it's less than half price. And then after the three years that you get when you buy one of these included, after that, once that runs out, it's just $29.99 a month. So if you're gonna do lots of charging away from home, getting one of these is a really cool idea. But let's get the car on charge first of all, shall we? Now, in order to do that, you've got a little button just here, and you've got two charge ports. The one I used at home, the right-hand one, that only does AC charging. The CCS DC charger is on the left-hand side. So I'm just gonna, open that charge port. I'm gonna turn the car off, and now I'm gonna go and connect my charger. Okay, touch to start. Methods of payment, I'm gonna do that. Yes, authentication successful. Plug in and start. That's the easiest charge ever. Okay. Okay, that is now charging. So we're charging at 200, that bottom right hand, 280 kilowatts. Um, that's very, very impressive. <laughs> so um, I'm currently charging at 172 kilowatts. That's a lot. I'm already at 30%. I got here at 18%. I'm already at 30%. I've hardly been uh, connected more than two, two or three minutes. Um, and I'm gaining miles at a rapid rate of knots. This is a nice demonstration of what I'm talking about. So we're now approaching 80% of charge and the charge speed has now dropped down to 118 kilowatts. And it will continue to do so. So we were charging at 280 kilowatts. Now we're only just over 100 kilowatts. And that's because the battery is slowly getting fuller and fuller. And from 80 to 100%, we're gonna be charging at around about a third the speed we were to get to 80%. And that's why now, now I've got 80% of battery state, now is the time you wanna unplug and be on your way. Wow. So, I have been here for just under 20 minutes, about 19 minutes. I've gone from 19% to 80% charge. I've gone from about 45 miles to 245 miles in 19 minutes. So that means I've just charged this car at around about 600 miles an hour. That's fast. So if you think a Taycan is quick, it actually does 600 miles an hour. Anyway, next stop is Porsche Center Reading to drop this car off. Now I just want to demonstrate something to you. Okay, here we go. 30 miles an hour. 70 miles an hour. <laughs> it's just, oh boy. You, the amount of grip it finds, you can feel the, you can feel the, the, the wheels just, just scrabbling for grip and then as soon as they hook up, poof, you're gone. 
absolutely mega. And the off the line acceleration, we've already seen a launch, but for me, it's the mid range. It's that mid range acceleration. So if I just bop back down to sort of 55, 70, it's like bang. It's just unbelievable. It is relentless acceleration. <laughs> anyway, one of my final thoughts and impressions on Taycan having spent uh, a few days with one. Well, it's a very impressive car. I think you, you would struggle to get in this car and not and not be impressed by it as, as an EV. Um, I asked the question at the beginning, is it still the performance or the benchmark for a performance EV? It's pretty close. Um, it, it just drives so beautifully. The steering feel, considering it weighs 2.2 tonnes, it hides that dynamically so, so well. Um, the acceleration, the mid-range acceleration, the brake, they're all phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I think what this latest generation of Taycan's done with the improvements to the battery and to the range is just make it even more usable. I've demonstrated you can happily do 300 miles in this car um, and you can happily put a lot of charge in it very, very quickly. Um, my challenge with it as a vehicle I've got a couple. First one is I've never been that much of a fan of the Saloon Taycan. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I much prefer the Sport and Cross Turismo versions. In fact, I think that's one of the most uh, attractive cars that Porsche make. And then the other problem is there's a, there's a new Porsche EV in town and that is the Macan. Now I have driven one of those only briefly up the hill at Goodwood. Uh, massively, massively impressive car. And the Macan Turbo, it's a little bit less powerful than this, but it's it's the same thing. It's I mean, it's got all the power and all the performance you need, but it's just that little bit more practical, I think. It's probably easier to get in and out of. There's more room in the back. I haven't sat in the back of this, only the dogs have been in there, but it's not the most spacious vehicle in the world. The Macan's got a, a bigger boot, just a little bit more practicality. So I think that would be my go-to Porsche EV. And actually, one of the things that you probably want to think about is if you're not looking at a brand new car is you look at used Taycans, whether that's Sport Cross Turismo or the Saloon, there's some good bargains to be had. They may not have the latest battery in them, but my goodness me, is this a good car? There's always an argument to say the base Taycan rear wheel drive is the one to go for. It's the cheapest of them all and it has more than enough performance for most people. You know, do you need 700 horsepower in a car? Of course you don't. But when you have it, well, it's good fun. And then just in terms of the benchmark of performance EVs, there are some, some really interesting takes on what a performance EV should be. There's the hot hatch take from Ionic with the, uh, from Hyundai rather, with the Ionic 5N and the synthetic gears and the noise, that's hard to miss. And it's, it's way less money. It's you know, probably a third the price of this car we're sat in. Uh, or Kia EV6 GT, or even things like the new Alpine A290, or the Alfa Romeo Junior, EVs that are designed around a driver. They're not just you know, get you from A to B uh, efficiently with the killing as few polar bears as possible. So yeah, Taycan. It's an impressive car. I love the spec, the colors, uh, this truffle interior. I thought it was a bit punchy when I first picked the car up. I've actually grown to like it a lot. And I think with a kind of brushed gold accent, it's just beautiful in here. And it's such a lovely place to do a long journey. So smooth, so quiet, really impressive. Anyway, I would love to know what you think of the Taycan. Have you had one? Have you had any experience of one? Um, what would your choice of performance EV be? Even if you're a petrolhead, even if you think the word EV should be banned from the lexicon of language, which one would you go for? What would your pinnacle of performance EVs be right now? But for now, I'm gonna head back to Porsche Reading. If you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrolhead for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe. We might just have to do some of that mid-range acceleration thing again.